Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India module we will look at glazing and shading system. So far we have talked about the opaque component, opaque wall system. Here we will look more closely into the glazing and shading system. So we will talk about thermal properties of glazing which is important. Then the next thing we will talk about is shading system, designing shading system primarily. So what determines the thermal efficiency of glazing system? This first thing of course is thermal transmittance of glass same as we talk about wall thermal you know transmittance u value of wall the most commonly referred thing is thermal transmittance of glass the next important factor is solar heat gain through glass this is a important factor which ranges from 0 to 1 we will look at this factor more closely this tells you how much amount of you know radiant heat gets into the particular system apart from the conductive heat transfer next thing is thermal transmittance of the frame which is you know nothing less than no less important than the glass itself it is also crucial and the last thing is the air tightness of the glass frame assembly how well your glazing system is sealed if you have a lot of infiltration as we discussed in the previous modules we will have heat gains and losses in, you know hot air coming in as when you heat your building the hot air will go out there will be you know heat gains and losses which is not you know intended so, in that case your cooling load or heating load will considerably go up. So, four parameters are there apart from other things four are very crucial. First is the U value or thermal transmittance of the glass. Second is the solar heat gain through the glass. Third is thermal transmittance of the frame and the last is air tightness of the glass frame assembly. First the glazing U value which we commonly know the first property usually we refer to it is a heat transfer through conduction as we saw same as the you know your uh, opaque wall system as well it tells you how much amount of conductive heat flow happens through the glazing system say you know imagine you have a single glass system you have a 6 mm glass single glass system versus you have an air gap and you have a double glass system you have a dgu or double glass unit so 6 mm this is 12 mm another 6 mm. So, as you increase the number of layers or a triple glass system another layer then you will keep you know the U value starts coming down it essentially tells you how much conductive heat flow happens. So, this matters then the next conductive you know property of this air gap or if it is inert gas field like argon field then this brings down your U value further the next layer, next layer, next layer apart from the film coefficients outside and inside. So, the more number of layers or the thickness of glass itself varies or the type of infill whether it is air or an inert gas like argon field then your U value considerably reduces an air you know air filled versus argon versus a vacuum insulated system the u value considerably comes down apart from this then important another important factor is the solar heat gain coefficient that is shgc commonly referred as shgc some of the older codes or test standard refer it as sc or shading coefficient we will look at the relation it simply gives you the ratio of solar heat gain through the glass relative to the incident solar radiation so what happens when the solar incidence happens on the glass it is a proportion of the you know solar energy directly transmitted as well as absorbed and re-emitted. So, moment you have the long wave solar radiation you know short wave sorry the short wave solar radiation hitting your glass then it absorbs first partly it is transmitted then some of it is absorbed and then retransmitted each layer retransmits it effectively it is given using a number called SHGC or solar heat gain coefficient it ranges from 0 to 1 the lesser or more closer to 0 it in, you know in, you know it tells you the efficiency of the glazing system 
So today we talk about you know highly efficient low e low no, low emissive glazing system. We'll talk about them, but they will have SHGC more close to say something like 0.15 or 0.25. This will be efficient system versus you will have something like 0.7 or 0.8 for single clear glazing system, so which means more amount of radiant heat is getting transmitted into the space compared to this particular glazing system. So, how does it matter? Imagine you are designing a building in a colder climate, a place like Srinagar where the ambient is getting really close inside you are heating the building. The primary mode of heat transfer which is of importance is the heat you know conductive because you are heating the building you do not want the heat to be lost outside. Ambient is really cold or imagine the outside is frozen, it is at minus 10 degree, you are heating your building, say inside is you know plus 20 degrees, ambient is at minus 10 degrees. So, the gradient is inside to outside in this case, you are heating it, in the ambient it is snow. Conductive heat loss takes the primary thing. On the other hand, during summers, you really want more direct solar heat gain to come because the temperatures are not going to go very high, expect, except for certain extreme cases where you know both summer as well as winter are both harsh. Mostly, you know, the summer sun is always welcome. So, you want more glazing surface, the radiant heat is welcome. So, in that case, you will want the U value as a primary indicator. SHGC is also important because you do not want your building to get overheated. As we looked at the you know greenhouse effect where the glass is more transparent to short wave solar radiation, but when the internal surfaces absorb and start re-emitting it, it is opaque to it. So, the heat gets trapped inside which is called greenhouse effect which we do not want to happen. So, in that case we try and restrict the radiant property or the radiant transfer through the glass as well. Imagine you are designing in a hotter climate or a hot season, where the indoor is at 24 degrees, you are conditioning it to 24 degree, ambient is at 45 degrees. You have a glazing system, similarly you have a double glass system. So, essentially what happens? You have a lot of Apart from conductive heat gain, you also have a direct solar heat gain which considerably impacts the radiant gain and the cooling efficiency and comfort indoor. So, while you design for hotter climate or hotter seasons, in fact, solar heat gain coefficient becomes a crucial factor. There is a lot of difference if you take a particular Indian location, any location most of it is warm or hot locations except for the northern belts which is really cold. Solar heat gain coefficient has higher impact compared to U value. Most of the tests and you know the experiments we conducted, we found a higher impact say for example, when I am reducing a solar heat gain coefficient from 0.8 to 0.2, there is a drastic reduction in the cooling energy as well as the improvement in comfort is also much higher compared to reduction in U value. U value is also crucial, but solar heat gain coefficient takes the front seat if you are designing for a hotter location. It is improved by two different you know things. First is if you are able to minimize or cut off the direct solar radiation. You have sun here. If you have a shading device which is cutting the solar incidence, then you can actually improve the performance. Actually, you are not doing much to the glass. Here still the conductive heat flow will happen. Whereas, you are cutting off the direct solar incidence so, your radiant transfer will be minimized. This is an indirect way of controlling the solar heat gain through the window. So, for this case, we do not look at SHGC of just the glass or the window alone, but we look at something called a composite SHGC, where the glazing and shading together is accounted for. Other way of looking at it is to go for selective or spectrally selective coating, where we talk about low heat glasses, low emissive glasses. So, instead of providing a shading system, here I am trying to give you a solution where for example, this is a commercial building facade where the designer is not interested in providing shading system. 
this is your building, this is in, this is out. You apply a specific coating on this particular glazing system, a low E coating. Essentially, it is a silver coat with certain you know nano particles associated. What this does is, this is spectrally selective. As we know, solar radiation has a wider spectrum from ultraviolet to visible to infrared. Solar radiation is on short wave infrared and then the re radiation is on long wave. This particular coating will be, this can be applied on this surface or this surface. There are variations associated. We generally do not do the coating here <coughs> because of wear and tear. Same reason here, it can be done on this face or this face. <coughs> what essentially this does? This coating allows visible radiation while it reflects the short wave. The short wave radiations are reflected back while the visible spectrum is allowed in. That means, it allows light to pass through, but it cuts down <coughs> the short wave radiation. If you go back you know 25, 30 years <coughs> back in time, moment when people realized that this clear glass or clear glazing system are highly radiative, they have a lot of radiant heat gain. They started using a coated glass or a tinted glass. Essentially, it is a you know mix bronze or some kind of metal which is mixed in the glass. So, the glass gets darker. As a consequence, what happens? The light transmittance through the glass came down drastically. Say, when I said 0 0.7 or 0 0.8 for a clear glass, the light transmittance or visible light transmittance that is VLT here will be around 75 percentage. That is 75 percent of light is transmitted into the building which will actually help you in reducing your lighting energy or lighting loads. So, number of lights can be less or less lights can be turned on. Whereas, when you want to reduce this particular thing, instead of going for a spectrally selective coating, coating if you are going for a tinted glass, a dark colored tinted glass, say bronze colored glass, then your SIGC might come down, say instead of 0.7, it can go to say 0.5 whereas your visible light transmittance becomes 30 percent. So, only 30 percent of the available outdoor light can come into your building, whereas this has come down marginally. So, there is a improvement here, but this is leading to a problem. On the other hand, when you use a low E coated or a spectrally selective glazing, this does not happen. Even for a glazing with 0.2 SHGC, you may be able to get a VLT or visible light transmittance up to 50, 55 percent or with you know modern day coatings it can even be higher. It depends on you know the type of products or the coating material which is used. The conventional way of referring was shading coefficient. Some of the data sheets still refer shading coefficient because some test standards are able to demonstrate shading coefficient. SHGC is a factor of shading coefficient. You can you know for a quick working you can multiply it by 0.85. When I said you know spectrally selective coating, this is what actually happened. This is a demonstration, you know, which I illustration which I <coughs> referred from another book, textbook. This is a total solar spectrum. It starts from ultraviolet, you have a visible spectrum, and then this is a solar infrared. This is a transmittance of a system. What happens with the spectrally selective coating? This particular spectrum is reflected back while this particular spectrum is allowed. So, if you take wavelength it allows the wavelength in this range while it considerably blocks. Say this is clear glassing, glazing, it allows a lot of daylight, but it also allows short wave radiation. Number 2 is a bronze tinted glazing, it cuts down drastically on the light, visible light transmittance, but it also cuts little bit on your short wave radiation. So, here for clear glass, it is around 85 percent visible light transmittance, whereas it is 85 percent solar radiation transmittance, short wave transmittance also. On the other hand, if you go for a spectrally selective or low E coated, this is number 5, you get a visible light transmittance as high as 80 percentage. You can minimize the short wave or solar radiation transmittance up to 15 or 20 percentage. It, it varies as I said depending on the coating and the tint of the glass as well. So, this is more effective in controlling, but one thing we need to note with the effect of coating it is possible, but apart from this 
by the use of shading system also by cutting down the source itself that is direct incidence by avoiding using this particular strategy it is also much effective. If you are willing to go for shading system it is much more you know effective and economic to provide improved efficiency for the glazing system. I have referred one of the commercially available catalogs this corresponds to one company. There are lot of glazing companies everybody has an extensive data sheet. One of these things typically if you look at a brochure you will have commercial names <coughs> which is essentially not important in this section. We will have solar transmittance, visible transmittance, solar transmittance and UV transmittance. Some of them give this but not all. Here we have visible, so this particular glass 76 percent visible transmittance solar transmittance is 48 percent, reflectance out and in reflection this actually gives you an idea about whether you know a particular glass say it may be a see through glass, but still you will be able to see the reflections of your own self when the other side is not that bright. Imagine you are working in an office in the night time you will be seeing your own images if the inside reflections are higher. Then there is a U value which is for winter again it is you know specific standard some of them give you winter summer u value different test conditions when you say u value typically you will get nfrcr national fenestration rating council of us standard tested u value so there is a set outdoor temperature and set indoor temperature for which the u value is calculated some calculation procedures require you to test for different conditions also but most of these brochures you know data sheets that you get correspond to nfrc standard tested U values, then you have shading coefficient and SHGC. Let us take this first glass, it has a visible transmittance, it is a clear glass, 76 percent visible transmittance and about 60 percent or 0.59 solar heat gain coefficient SHGC. On the other side take another glass where you have an SHGC of 0.22 that is you have brought down the SHGC to pretty less than half of what it was here. The U value more or less remains the same with air it is 0.3 u value here it is 0.3 again u value did not change but the SIGC has considerably come down you know please remember the u value does not you know significantly get affected when you do a low e coating it is essentially a reflective coating you know please recollect the type of thermal insulations we talked about we have resistive insulation which is given by u value here we are talking about reflective insulation which is SHGC effect of coating where you have brought down the efficiency you know brought up the efficiency pretty higher solar heat gain coefficient or the radiant you know cut off for radiant has been brought to 0.22. The visible transmittance also has gone down, but there are also some other glasses where you have more or less a trade off you can see for all of them the U value remains the same while the SHGC considerably varies depending on the coating depending on this the visible light transmittance also considerably varies. So, what are the major challenges? Yes, we have an exhaustive data sheet more or less all the glass manufacturers would give you an exhaustive data sheet which where you will have you know series of numbers most of them you may not even you know look at or take as a criteria for selecting yes two or three crucial parameters you will look at and you will choose a glass, but what are the challenges practically? The first major challenge is what you get from this data sheet is something called center of glass U value. So, if you have a glass like this, you have frame all around, this is your glass. In this case, what actually happens? The value that they give you, they would have tested this glass panel through typically a hot plate apparatus that I was talking about. So, essentially, the value, the U value that they give you is something called center of glass u value somewhere taken corresponding to what happens in this the edge effects are the effect of the interaction with the typical frame system is not considered. There is a minor difference though it is not a huge impact, but still there is an impact between the center of glass u value to edge of the glass u value. Number two the need for u value of the frame itself imagine you have a u PVC frame versus an aluminum frame versus a highly insulated thermal barrier aluminum frame or different type of structural facade system versus a non structural facade system with thermal insulation without thermal insulation. So, see you have a highly insulated glass here if the frame itself is not thermally insulated then you will have a lot of gains and losses happening at this particular 
juncture. So, this particular things become a weaker link, this will create problems for you. Number 3 is computation of whole assembly u value. So, imagine the next step hurdle you have crossed, you have the glass u value, you also have the frame u value. Now, how do you compute the whole assembly u value? Do you think for each of these combinations, so you have chosen a frame out of 1000 options available and you have chosen a glass out of 1000 glasses available in the market. Do you think somebody is going to test the whole system and give you? No. For specific projects, for larger projects, you might be required to test, you know, in the laboratory a glass frame assembly also. Some sophisticated projects depending on the requirements might demand you to test this as well, but some of the projects you can compute them. If a standard, you know, good tested value, reliable value is available for glass and frame, then it is possible to compute the whole assembly u value. Again, you know, please remember here we talked about the material level property, here we are talking about the assembly level property. The next important thing is the effect of shading system on SHGC. Naturally, you know, you buy this from a separate company, this is sold by a separate company and essentially when you have a shading system, that is sold by a separate company. So, who is, you know, either it is a hand, you know, cast in situ shading device, concrete or, you know, masonry shading device or it may be a aluminum or steel section which is available like gluers or blinds that you are going to install. So, the effect of this particular shading system on the glass is another crucial thing which needs to be accounted. Apart from all this, whether we are doing steady state computation, a particular instance in which u value and SHGC are determined versus the dynamic side performance. What happens to the solar movement, what happens to the insulation versus how much is getting transmitted is highly dynamic. These are challenges, but with all this, the industry has proceeded much faster. So, we have more or less standard values available. Now, just to give you a better picture of what I have been talking about, two different frame systems, this particular frame versus the other one, I am not getting into details of what frame it is and what they actually mean, but typically the heat transfer through this frame is relatively higher compared to this and the effect of different frames, actually we took 10 different glasses, 5 different frames and how much amount of energy saving happened, yes glass has a lot of impact compared to this versus this, the savings has gone up, say here you get about 8 to you know 9 percent saving, whereas you get around to 1 to 2 percent saving in this particular glass. But what we need to note, even with this glass, if you go for an efficient frame, you can go as high as 4 percent energy saving. Even if the glass is really good, if the frame is not good, you will lose 1 and a half to 2 percent of your estimated energy saving. So, frame has a crucial role in the effect of the energy efficiency you know impact of the overall system. How do you design shading device, a quick overview of the processes involved in designing shading system. We have you know looked at the solar charts, what I have superimposed here, you know in a following session I will also demonstrate how to compute this using certain tools, but to take a quick look at it, you have a solar chart, sun path diagram, this is for Bangalore, the window size is 2400 by 1200, this is facing south. So, you say a, see a thin you know set of grey lines, it gets darker as it goes here. This is on December 21st, that is winter solstice. So, this particular window, which is, you know, imagine the window is located here. There is a shading system, a simple horizontal shading device, 450 mm thick. It is going to cast a set of shadows. After a while, you will not get much shade. When the sun is here, you will get shade. So, this typically gives you a estimate. I will show you more details about this. This is for a west facing, the same window located on a west facing wall. Take a closer look at this, this is a uniform overcast sky, the amount of shading, the percentage efficiency of the shading, percentage shading is 40 percent for a south facing wall with a 450 mm shading device, whereas almost you get no shading if it is a west facing wall. Yes, horizontal shading devices are not effective, we will look at more in detail. The conventional method of calculating shading was using a shadow angle protractor and sun path diagram. Typically, this is like you know, you have radial lines marked 0 at the center and goes up to plus 90 and minus 90. Then you have these arc lines, they coincide with the altitude angle and here it coincides with the 90 plus 90 and minus 90. You typically mark the duration and time in which season and duration in which shading is required. You put this over, superimpose it 
and then I will show you some examples of how to do this, but before that few angles are important, we need to you know recollect azimuth is you know this is like a trigonometric projection of the 3D sun movement on two dimension. It gives you the azimuth angle on which orientation relative to north or south where the sun is located and altitude tells you you know relative to the horizon at what angle the sun is located. Shading system requirement vary with respect to climate, latitude, longitude of a place, facade orientation and typical shading requirements. Apart from this altitude and azimuth angle, we have three other important parameters. One is the wall or surface azimuth angle that is to which particular orientation the wall is tilted to it can be referred from north or from south. Then you have something called horizontal shadow angle and you have something called vertical shadow angle. We will look at these two things more in detail. The horizontal shadow angle is a difference between the azimuth of the sun's position and the wall orientation that is wall azimuth and the solar azimuth. It gives you the difference that is effectively it takes into consideration the orientation of the wall surface. So, this gives you the horizontal shadow angle, the difference actually gives you the horizontal shadow angle. So, how to understand this? If horizontal shadow angle, see if this is a line drawn, this actually gives you how much projection you need. So, the lesser the horizontal shadow angle, this line converges and this projection is going to come further ahead. So, this is a vertical shading system, the effectiveness of a vertical shading system is given by horizontal shadow angle. So, if you have to, see if you know this is a, for example a south facing surface you have sun moving from this side to this side as this gets further the cutoff duration increases. So, you want for example 8 am in the morning to 6 pm in the evening you want cutoff the depth of this overhang the you know the vertical shading device this is a plan you know plan view this will further deepen. So, the cutoff will be more similarly for the afternoon hours. Alternately, if you want the cutoff only from 10 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock in the evening, this can be shorter or if the latitude of the place, if you do not get deep southern sun, this can be lower. If the sun is just passing on like this, then you may not need a deep vertical overhang. This is as far horizontal shadow angle is considered. It is nothing but solar azimuth minus wall azimuth. Once you have this number horizontal shadow angle, you can actually find out what is a PV that is the projection depth, the depth of the projection required for which you will need the window dimension, mostly you will have the window dimension in this formula then you will know the left hand side. So, I know what is the width of the window, say imagine I have a 2 meter long window, then I only do not know what should be the projection required. So, to know this you will take this in this side, it will be the width of the window by tan horizontal shadow angle. So, the horizontal shadow angle gets to the denominator, the lesser it is the deeper the shading you are going to get. The next is a vertical shadow angle, this is a reverse of it, it is more or less the altitude versus the cutoff. So, the lower the altitude of the sun, you are going to get more solar incidence on your window surface. So, the vertical shadow angle will vary accordingly. Similarly, a lesser vertical shadow angle, this is taken between the horizontal plane and the you know range you where you need the cutoff. It can be same as altitude angle provided you want to cut off the whole of the sun. If you do not want sun on this particular day, then your shading device will be this deep. For example, you have a window, this is a south oriented window, sun is here during October, October you have sun coming here. So, you want a cut off you have provided a shading system like this, then in December, this is October, in December you are going to get sun at this point, you may not want to cut off the December sun, so you can just curtail your shading system at this point, so you will be getting sunlight during December. But if you further want this to be cut off even during December, then you need a deeper shading system. As the vertical shadow angle comes down, the shading depth increases similar to what we saw in the previous example. Same as that, if you will know the height of the window, what you need to know is the depth of the projection, you will know what is a vertical shadow angle. Once you know the vertical shadow angle, you can determine the cutoff and how much width is required or alternately if you know the width, you can find out what is a 
you know shadow throw how much shadow this is going to throw on a particular fenestration apart from this another small step which is needed in shading calculation even if you provide a proper horizontal shading system if the sun is moving from this end to this end then you will have sun cutting from the sides so to cut this off you need a slight projection there is a formula here the depth or a a dash i have mentioned here this particular depth shown in the red line can be given by width of the horizontal shading into tan horizontal shadow angle this will give you how much projection extra is required so if you have a window this long whether i should curtail it here or should i extend it further and if so how much extension is required this particular depth that is a a dash which i have mentioned in the formula is given by this simple equation how do we go step by step first is determine the cut off date you take a solar chart determine the cut off date to which you need you know you want to exclude sun and start an end time whether you want it for all through the sunshine hours or specific duration say you want from 9 to 1:30 or say 4 o'clock in the evening for our you know ease of working let us say 9 to 4 o'clock in the evening we want cut off on a particular day up to a particular day then calculate azimuth and altitude angle calculate the shadow angle and further estimate the width and depth of shading system to show you graphically the first step is 9 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the evening i am saying this is a south facing wall so i want to exclude sun all through the year up to december 21st up to winter solstice i will prefer excluding the sun the altitude i have taken delhi as a location the altitude on that particular extreme so i have to find out the extreme case december 21st at these points 1 2 3 i have to find out altitude angle and azimuth angle are known sun's position this is at 9 o'clock this is at you know 4 o'clock in the evening same altitude and azimuth angle is determined next determine the shadow angle horizontal and vertical shadow angle once i determine what is a horizontal and vertical shadow angle as i said i know the window height and width with that i can calculate the projection which is required horizontally as well as vertically so this is a traditional way of calculating another approach using computational tools i'll be demonstrating in one of the following sessions if you take a code like energy conservation building code which is more commonly used for building applications today it gives you a very simple approach or simplified approach rather you may not be able to precisely find out the shading projection and depths for any specific location but overall it gives you two conditions one is north latitude 15 degrees or greater and less than 15 degrees north latitude that is below 15 degrees and above 15 degree two you know specific instances are given and four orientations are addressed north east or west and south first thing is it asks you to calculate something called projection factor which is nothing but this versus the vertical you know how tall is your window plus the small you know gap that you provide here the masonry you provide here and what is the depth this particular thing usually you will want to determine this so the formula turns the other way then if you know the projection factor you can substitute it here for different projection factors you have something called m factor or you know which is needed for the shading calculation so once you know the projection factor they give you how much amount of m factor is given is taken from this table if you substitute then you will get a desired amount of shading depth what i'll do in the subsequent section i'll demonstrate a software with which you can determine the shading and one or two worked examples using this projection factors as well so we looked at the thermal properties of glazing what is important glass frame and assemblies then we looked at shading systems typically what angles are involved and how do we design a quick estimate of the shading depths vertical and horizontal shading devices thank you